Howdy, my name is Nonat, and this video's gonna be weird, because this is one of those rare cases where I'm just outright bullying Pathfinder. I don't usually do this. You know, when I'm reviewing a piece of Pathfinder content, I like to look at the positives and the negatives and look at it kind of unbiased and just talk about what I like and dislike about it. The assassin archetype, however, there's nothing to like. And today I'm gonna tell you why you should never take this archetype. But first, I'm kind of thirsty, and I could use a nice drink. Wait a second. Local beer isn't hydrating, and it doesn't even have caffeine or any other things to give me that early morning boost. <gasps> but I have... Gusuel. I actually forgot to make some ahead of time, so pardon me as I just get this ad spot ready. <laughs> oh, f Seriously, if you've been following this channel for the last year, you know that I swear by G Fuel. It's delicious, it's not too sweet, I mean it's a powder, it can be as sweet as you want to make it, and I think that's what I appreciate about it. Originally I was all against these powdered supplements, because I'm like, meh, I don't want to have to make it. But then I realized you can make it perfect every time. You know, if it's 8 in the morning and you need a head start, you know, make a whole cup. If it's 4 in the afternoon and you just need a little perk up, use half a dose or whatever. It's completely customizable and there's so many freaking flavors. And something I've never really touched on is how scary some of these flavors are. Like how accurate they are. They have a Swedish fish flavor. It tastes like Swedish fish. I own it. It's terrifying and delicious. So yeah, whether you need a restock of G Fuel or you want to try it for the first time, head to gfuel.com and use code NONAT for 20 to 30% off your order. They've got some great starter packs which come with a few different flavor packets as well as a shaker. And hey, even if you don't end up liking it, you still got the shaker, which is a great quality cup. I love them. I miss mine. I left it in my old car, which I don't have anymore. G Fuel? Can I have a new shaker? So get some G Fuel today, and thank you again, G Fuel, for being an amazing partner of the channel. You have treated me so well for the past 13 months. Here's to 13 more. All right, let's talk about this garbage. So what makes the assassin so disappointingly bad? It should be good at one thing. It should be really good at assassinating. You know, it should be really good at one huge hit that kills a target outright, right? That sounds like what the assassin should do. So what do you get with the dedication? Well, first off, it's got so many prerequisites. You need to be second level, you need to have alchemical crafting as a skill feat, and you need to be trained in crafting, deception, and stealth. Three different skills, which already use three different ability scores. Can we talk about that? Deception's charisma, crafting's intelligence, and stealth is dexterity. Not to mention the alchemical crafting skill feat, which means maybe if you take the skill feat along with this at level 2, your GM will let you take this as well. But if not, you're either going to need to be an alchemist, be a level 1 character who took a skill feat background that gives alchemical crafting, or wait until level 4, which makes this dedication even weaker. So what do you get for this dedication? Well, passively, you get nothing. You do, however, get a unique ability that costs three actions to do. You get Mark for Death. You need to be able to see and hear your target in order to mark them for death, which means unless you are perfectly hidden in a place where you can see and hear them and combat hasn't started, this is going to take a full turn of your combat to set up if you didn't do it ahead of time. Well, what amazing benefits do you get for wasting an entire one of your turns? Plus two to seek the target, which, remember, this is a target you can already see, so that's only useful if they go invisible after you've marked them. You get plus two to deception checks to faint against them. That's not bad. That's a pretty decent one. And all weapons get the backstabber and deadly d6 traits against that target meaning if you are flanking or they're otherwise off guard you deal one extra point of damage to them and if you critically hit you get to add a d6 to your critical that sounds like a lot but remember you skipped a whole turn of combat so an extra one damage and an extra d6 on a critical hit is what you get in exchange for missing out on one maybe two attacks which could have hit anyway. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's only on agile, finesse, and unarmed attacks, so this won't work on like a longsword or something. It's the same stipulations as the rogue's sneak attack. Okay, but let's see it. That's the dedication. Dedications are made to be weak. They're made to be a less optimal, but more versatile choice over one of your class feats, unless you're playing with free archetype, of course. So maybe it gets better with time, like most archetypes. Well, let's see what it gets at level four. Expert Backstabber. If you strike an off-guard target with a backstabber weapon, which remember, Mark for Death does give all of your agile and finesse weapons backstabbers, you deal two bonus damage instead of one. Whoa. But it doesn't stop there. Once you have a plus three weapon, you deal four bonus damage instead of two. That's crazy, right? That's double the normal damage bonus of Backstabber. And I mean, that's not that late in the game. What level do you get plus three weapons? Oh. Level 16. So let me read you what this feat actually does. This is a feat that gives you plus one damage while flanking. And then at level 16, it increases to plus two damage over the normal Backstabber trait. Because remember, you're going to be using Backstabber anyway. So this is just giving you plus one at level four, and then another plus one at level 16. Well, hey, if that doesn't sound good, you can always take Surprise Attack, you know, if you're not already a rogue, which I feel like most assassins are going to be rogues. Because this is a rogue class feature they get at level one. It's nice if you're playing, I guess, a monk assassin. You know, as long as you roll high on initiative, all enemies acting after you are flat-footed off guard that round. But only if you rolled Deception or Stealth, by the way. Not if you rolled Perception, so... You better be hiding! And then they get nothing until 10th level. They get some additional feats that exist in other classes, but... At the end of this video, I'll get into why I'm not going over this archetype completely in depth like my other ones, and also why I'm treating it a little bit differently. Because there's a reason I'm doing this video in this style versus my normal archetype videos, which if you want to see one of those, you can click up here. So six levels later, you get Angel of Death, which is, sadly, useless in a lot of campaigns. If you strike a creature who you have previously marked for death by skipping your turn early, and you drop them to zero hit points, they die immediately. This gains the death trait and they die. Problem is, after three years playing this game, with at this point at least five different GMs, I have never had a monster live past zero hit points unless we specifically knocked it unconscious. I don't know what GMs are giving monsters death saves that this would circumvent, but I guess if your GM gives monsters death saves like a player, then Angel of Death is useful, you know, instantly kills them, they can't come back. There's a little more to it, which is a little bit niche, and I will give Grant is kind of cool. If you do kill them this way with the Angel of Death feature when they were marked for death, their, like, spirit dies, too. They cannot be communicated with. They cannot be returned to life unless the person trying to do so succeeds a counteract check against half your level. So it's a cool feature. I don't know how often it's gonna come into play. This feels more interesting for a GM to do to an NPC. That would be a neat way to circumvent, you know, one of your players talking to them. But overall, very specific. But finally, we come to the level 12 capstone feat of the assassin. The assassinate feat that you've been praying for all game. God, is it disappointing. So let's go over what it does. For two actions, you strike someone you've marked for death. And it deals an extra 6d6 precision damage. That's really good, right? Sure, it's two actions, but that's a lot of bonus damage. Now, this bonus damage does come with a fortitude save. If they succeed, they take half. If they crit succeed, they take none. But if they critically fail, they die. Straight up. Doesn't matter how much health they have. That's awesome. Until you realize it's an incapacitation effect, meaning it'll never work on someone higher level than you. And isn't that who you'd want to assassinate? The big head of everything, you know? You, why are you assassinating the, the level 9 guard? I guess if they're by themselves, maybe that's useful, but it gets worse! Let's take a look at those prerequisites. You've marked them using mark for... Assassination, never actually noticed that typo until just now. It's marked for death. 
and are completely unnoticed by your mark. Keep an eye on that terminology. It does not say hidden. It does not say unseen. It says unnoticed. Meaning, if you creep up on them, and they even hear you, and they don't know where you are, you are no longer allowed to use assassinate, because they're just aware you exist. The only place assassinate is ever useful is on a long-ranged weapon, shooting from a distance where they can't notice you. Assassinate, you know, that thing you want to do where you creep through the shadows, sneak up behind someone, and sort of garrot them or whatever. That awesome image in your brain, never gonna happen. Let me paint a picture for how hard it would be to actually approach a single creature undetected into melee range and assassinate them. First off, you need to be hiding. Sure, you're in a bush, whatever. You start sneaking. Guess what? If at any time during your movement you are not in cover or concealed, you're not undetected anymore. You're hidden. They don't know where you are, but they know you're there. You're no longer undetected. You are now hidden, and you cannot assassinate. Let's say it's a flat wall. Let's say you can move behind the entire wall and sneak up behind this guard. Well, when you sneak, unless you have certain feats to augment it, you can only move half your speed. Let's say you have a movement speed of 30 feet and this guard is 60 feet away. You now need to sneak four times to approach them. At the end of your movement, the GM rolls your stealth check and compares the result to the perception DC of each creature you were undetected by at the start of your movement. Granted, if you're in cover, you do get plus two, plus four if it's in greater cover. This still means you need to roll four stealth checks, rules as written, to approach this guy. Unless he's way lower level than you or has garbage perception, one in four chances, you're gonna roll a five or less. And guess what happens if you fail? You are now considered hidden instead of undetected. It doesn't matter that you're going behind an entire wall. If you roll low enough one of those four rolls and you miss his perception DC by one, you are now hidden. You can now not use assassinate. I hate this feat so much. So why am I making this video? Why am I so mad, so angry, talking about this archetype so differently from all of the other archetypes I've covered so far? Well, it's because I believe the Assassin is going to get a remaster in the remaster. We have already been told some archetypes are getting facelift. In the Ranger post, we heard that the Snare Crafter archetype is getting a facelift. There is no way in hell Paizo is going to let this version of the Assassin enter the remaster. I refuse to believe it. It is so weak. It is so specific, and it does not live out the fantasy of an assassin. My poor friend was playing a monk, and six months into the campaign, we were level six, and he's like, wow, my two feats from assassin have done nothing. Like, I got plus one damage in combat a couple times, now that we're level, like, past level four. And he was just so miserable that I let him respec for free, because it just felt so bad. The mark for death was worthless, because most combats he wouldn't start hidden just for one reason or another, bad luck, or or just there was no place to hide, and <laughs> even if he was hidden, he never really wanted the mark for death, either because it wasn't in character in the moment, or he didn't want to skip his turn in combat. Let alone if we reach level 12 and he'd need to roll four successful stealths, I would never rule it that way, I would homebrew the hell out of this, but as it stands, the assassin is one of the worst feeling archetypes in the entire game. And I'm praying to you, Paizo, fix it. But who knows? I'm just one opinion. Maybe you love it. Like I said, on ranged weapons, it's a little bit better. Maybe it's designed for ranged weapons. I mean, the guy there is holding a crossbow, so maybe I'm just trying to force it for melee rogues who want to sneak up and kill someone in one hit. Maybe that's not what it's designed for. I want to hear from you in the comments. What do you think? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it would change? How would you change it? Hit me up. I want to know. Thank you to G Fuel for sponsoring this video and sponsoring the channel. Don't forget to use code NONAT, N-O-N-A-T, at checkout for 20 to 30% off your order. That's all for me. 
I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, shameless plug.